in this class we are going to see computer basics we have a separate uh, part in epfo employee provident fund organization those who are preparing for this examination it's a very good option for opting as a career option also and for those who are preparing for upsc those who are preparing for upsc also this is going to be very good backup option in this computer basics is separately is given in the syllabus questions are going to be very easy one liner questions straight forward questions but if you completely neglect you will lose some easy questions some questions might be difficult out of 8 to 9 questions some questions might be difficult but there are certain questions which are very easy just if you are knowing what is what at very superficial level also you can score 4 to 5 questions that's why we should not leave computer part completely and one more reason why computer basics are required means this job requires some idea about computers because you are going to work in computers to handle the day to day functions employee provident fund organization deals with the provident fund of various employees in the government sector in order to calculate in order to disperse the funds backlogs everything you are going to work in computers that's why some basic idea is expected for this role that's why upsc has given some weightage to the computers let us see introduction this will help you to give you some idea about what is the computer architecture for example if i write the definition of what is computer in the definition itself you will get some terminologies these terms are helpful to understand what is the meaning of computer and also how you need to think about computers let us see this what is a computer there are many definitions one simple definition is it is in the present context what we are using today it is an electronic device it is an electronic device that process data that process data here the terms which i am underlining are technical words data and converts converts this data converts data into information now you see three terms are coming just in one sentence it is an electronic device an equipment which process data and converts it into information the difference between data and information is this is where the function of computer comes if you take the difference between data and information data is not organized one it can be an unorganized it is some kind of content that is unorganized or semi organized once you give this unorganized content to this electronic device it organized properly and gives the organized information this organized
you can call organized data if you consider this unorganized items or unorganized content if you give to the electronic device it becomes organized data or organized content in the first place why we need such kind of a device why we need such kind of help why can't we human beings use this data unorganized why can't we organize it manually we can use it later for the any decision purpose but to a certain level if data is small or if content is small if number of items are small we human beings can easily understand easily process it our brain easily process but if the content is huge i can take i will take only example of epfo now you have the content or you have the details of millions of people now you need to organize it process it then only you can take decision so the ultimate purpose of organized data is to take for decision making unless you organize the data you cannot take the decision when it comes to upfo who are the real beneficiaries of provident fund how much they have to get how much as an officer you have to disperse it you need to have some kind of organized data to take the final decision for that decision making information is required but that information comes from the raw data so this is raw input you can say this is refined outcome so that you make less mistakes you take proper decision for the benefit of larger sections of the people if we see the meaning of computer how this computer name emerged now what is happening how it converts unorganized items into organized data means it does some kind of operations it does some kind of operations it compute it calculates based on that calculation it perform this this one if we take data what this data means what this data contains the next part is data can be first one suppose employee provident fund you can take employee name name contains alphabets every employee may have employee id this can be number employees do have address this address is the combination of this numbers this is called numeric plus alphabets now we can see data broadly we can divide into three parts first one is numeric data this one example because you are going to prepare for epfo i have taken this example if you organize this you have numeric data this numeric contains 10 digits 0 1 2 and so on up to 9 combination of this number of digits may vary this is one form of data numeric data another one is alphabetic data this like a b c and so on up to z 26 it can be 
small letters also, capital letters also, alpha bits. Space also part of it. Third one, alpha numeric, combination of alpha plus numeric. So it contains both numeric data plus alphabetic data. So whatever input we are giving to the computer or whatever information coming out of it, it consists of numbers, alphabets or mix of alpha numeric, special characters also in addition to that. <coughs> Special characters like underscore, if you see the keyboard, you will find special characters apart from numeric. If you see the keyboard, one side you will find numerics, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Another part you will find alphabets, A, B, C, D. Along with numeric and alphabets, you will find special characters like full stop, colon, double colon, semicolon, all these things, ampersand, likewise. This is one categorization of data. So this is the first level of understanding about computer. Data information. This organized data is we call information. Generally, applications means computer applications A lot of applications now without computer, we don't see any kind of activity. But broadly to have, because you are preparing for EPFO, from there if you start one in administration, employee provident fund organization, administering this particular fund, you need to have computers, otherwise manually it is not possible. Second one, for communication. Employees should communicate among themselves, those who are preparing or those who are clearing this exam. They will be given office and within office you have to communicate like email. And you have to communicate to the beneficiary, those who are eligible for the provident fund final settlement. So to communication. Then, once you disperse m amount of money, it goes to banks, banking, again, computers are required, n number of applications like this, business, education, science and technology, defense. Particularly, the threats, national security threats are going to change. The nature of national security is going to change completely in 21st century because of computers. Cyber security, everything. Now you see, everything is going to be connected to the computers. And computers, cyber security is going to be a major issue in 21st century because the kind of applications computers are having in each and every field. This is the basic thing which will give you some kind of idea about what computer means. Suppose now we are going more technical. This is general, general definition. Generally here you may think how questions can be asked from this particular introduction. One question can be asked like Whatever we have seen, just from this, the unorganized items 
आर कॉल्ड ये इंफॉर्मेशन बी डेटा सी डी समथिंग एल्स सी कैन वी सम अदर पासवर्ड डी नन ऑफ दबो जस्ट अनऑर्गनाइज कंटेंट इज कॉल्ड डेटा सिमिलरली अदर क्वेश्चन कैन बी दि आर्गनज डेटा इज कॉल्ड दट ईज इंफर्मेशन सो दिस कैंड ऑफ क्वेश्चन सिंपल वन लाइन स्टेटमेंट यूज टू कम फ्रॉम द कंप्यूटर बेसिक्स दट्स वाई मिनिमम ऐडिया इज रिक्वर्ड अबउट द बेस कंप्यूटर्स now onwards we will go into little bit technical now this computer we are saying it calculates but simply whatever information we are having raw data or raw input there should be a mechanism to give that raw input or raw items to the computer that machine there should be a mechanism within the electronic device within that device some kind of mechanism architecture should be there to process it and finally some kind of mechanism is definitely required to give the final information or output this we call the architecture one simple way of looking at this is this way this we give input second stage process third stage is output we give input whatever items we have we give it processed and finally output comes now to this input whatever we are giving the list of items we call it as data just now we have seen how questions are also can be asked in epfo this is an organized list of items this unorganized form is given as input to that device finally it comes this data becomes organized that we call information so this is one simple way of so unstructured you can call anything unstructured it becomes structured semi organized it becomes well organized semi organized it becomes well organized this is one way of simple way of looking at the architecture of computer we need to go little bit deeper now this process contains certain elements these elements we can consider as a unit so this is also computer architecture we also computer architecture whatever we are processing there now you see this contains many question multiple question just between data and information you have seen here whatever terms i am going to write they are potential questions in epfo every computer system whether whatever we are seeing at homes there are different types of computers laptop one type of computer desktop one type of computer personal our smartphone in in the hand that is a kind of computer main frame one kind of computer super computer the name itself is giving super computer likewise the size of the computer will change according to the need of the need of the requirement 
whatever may be the computer these are very fundamental this is the architecture of computer whether it is a laptop desktop mainframe supercomputer only the power will change but the basic architecture is going to be the same this we call a unit this we call a unit as part of this process that's why it is in the center input processing output mechanism that's why we give this particular unit if you consider this as input this as output it is located in the center this we call it is a process we are considering this as a unit this unit is important for processing and it is the crux of core of the computer central processing unit in simple terms we call cpu central processing unit this itself is a question what do you mean by cpu what is cpu stands for simple question so question can be cpu stands for so this is how questions will come in computer basics that's why you should not miss just by knowing at surface level also you will be able to answer them cpu stands for central processing unit now you know how this name came central part core part of computer this unit process it process whatever input comes process simply this side data this side information in the process how it turns data into information is done by the processing unit again within that now to process this data you need some kind of calculations you will do some kind of additions you will do some kind of suppose if you do manually you are given 1000 ids employee ids now you need to do something and you need to kind of take a decision about the provident fund final settlement what you will do you will try to calculate some addition you will do some subtraction you will do some multiplication you do some divisions you do and also you will try to combine some other parameters suppose when they joined when they are going to retire in between if some other arrangement is also there or it's some part of if they are beneficiary of some other scheme you are going to do multiple operations and you will take if an employee is eligible for two types of schemes now you will do some kind of settlement if they are not eligible or if they are eligible for any one of the schemes if there are multiple schemes if any one of the scheme one type of settlement likewise here two types of operations are coming one is arithmetic that is addition deletion multiplication and all another one is combining two three parts together they are called logic you will apply the logic means and or not if they are not part of the scheme you will eliminate some portion not if they are eligible between two schemes and in this scheme also and this scheme also the major core part is and you will do some kind of settlements if they are part of either this scheme or some other scheme you will do some kind of settlements this is simple example i have taken this we call arithmetic and logic there is a unit here arithmetic and logic within this a l u so what this u stands for unit this is a big unit central unit within the central unit you will find sub units this part is a l u a l u stands for arithmetic L stands for
arithmetic and logical unit arithmetic and logic unit a l u simple question what a l u stands for or uh, which of the following are part of cpu simple like that questions a l u this arithmetic and logic there should be some kind of mechanism to control these operations that we call control unit control unit it controls whatever data is coming it controls about alu unit it gets this between these two some kind of mechanism now we can consider this as one sub unit now if you give lot of data it has to remember something otherwise suppose if we cannot remember it we cannot do the perform operations if you want to perform addition you need to remember two values a value one value two then only you can perform similarly this equipment also requires memory this we call memory unit so likewise control unit arithmetic and logic unit and memory unit these are continuously in play in giving final output there are certain devices for example how we give input to this cpu one example is keyboard if you enter employee name you have to enter through mechanism keyboard or if there is any website if you just go to the website and you want to highlight it that is through mouse one example suppose if employee comes for identification purpose when you go to other center for identification purpose iris that is scanning scanner this is how the data comes from the outside world to the computer world in this way and now once it goes to now once you type in the keyboard you don't know unless you see whether it is properly typed or not what is the mechanism that is monitor monitor is one thing another one printer you can print the data you can see the monitor output and you can see the printer data keyboard mouse scanner one type of input the devices which provide the input final output comes in the form of various parameters in in terms of scan uh, outside printer or through monitor we are able to see so when we see laptop when we see the desktop when we see super computers any kind of computers they have these inputs and the outputs this is the basic unit now who was the one who has given this particular type of architecture this architecture was not there in the earlier days it is a, in fact it is a recent phenomena this architecture was given by now here itself questions are there what alu stands for one question what control unit and cpu contains control unit alu memory all of the above all of the above this is one type keyboard mouse scanner are examples of a input b output c central processing unit input monitor printer are an example of output so input output cpu this is the basic structure who has given this this architecture was given in 1970 
he was his name is john john one newman so he was the one he was an european hungarian to be specific he settled in america and when he was in america he has given this central processing unit architecture this is how he said the computer should contain this architecture this became the fundamental core aspect to the rest of the computer systems after that john von neumann can be a question so the architecture what we are following who gave the computer modern computer architecture his person name is john von neumann remember this now based on this architecture we can have one more technical definition simple definition is we have seen simple definition it is an electronic device now you know this electronic device contains central processing unit some inputs and some output mechanisms they process data they take data from input mechanism finally gives information through output mechanism later we have seen process input output and to be more specific we have given this type of architecture who has given this architecture john von neumann he was the architecture based on this architecture we have one more definition and here we will see this it is a machine this definition says it is a machine which carry out now you see just based on this architecture this terminology will come which carry out sequence of arithmetic sequence of arithmetic and logical operations automatically if we do manually we have to take the pen and paper our brain to certain extent we our brain can calculate uh, without pen and paper but if you have a large number large data set then you need to take pen and paper manually you have to calculate this arithmetic means so this is the definition simple it is a machine electronic device in the definition which carry out sequence of arithmetic and logical operations automatically the sequence this sequence also called computations this is the word just remember it from this word we got computer the name computer we are saying computer it is a machine that carry out sequence of arithmetic and logical operations automatically the sequence also called computations now how this word computation came means it is latin word the meaning the word computer comes from latin word c o m computer this is the word in latin 
he is the one who gave this architecture but the meaning of computer computer eh, that means to calculate now you have seen computer means in the first definition there also one question is there potential question data and information electronic device which convert data into information simple definition if we go a little bit deeper technical it is a machine which performs certain calculations what are these calculations arithmetic calculations and the logical calculations automatically what are these arithmetic basic arithmetic when you are doing provident fund calculations we will do some addition subtraction multiplication division these are the basic arithmetic operations what are logical operations again here also question can be which of the following are arithmetic operations which of the following are logical operations and or not i i said i have taken one example if an employee is a part of two schemes scheme 1 and scheme 2 scheme 1 or scheme 2 not in scheme 1 not in scheme 2 likewise logical operations so these operations with a tremendous amount of data you can perform on the computer that's why it helps human beings to save lot of time we have to do if there is no computer we have to do manually all these operations but with the computer we can do these on millions of records very fastly without manual intervention and we may do some kind of mistakes if amount of data is very huge if number of employees are huge millions of employees and if you want to calculate you will take days number of days but computer perform in seconds that's why computer has changed the way old completely after this new architecture and modern computers broadly we will take one more thing evolution how it evolved over a period of time charles babbage he was considered as father of computer his name is his name is also important potential mcq who is considered as father of computer that is charles babbage so here if you see father of computer so here you can see some biological terms like father of computer is this this cpu one more we get is called brain of the computer cpu is the brain of the computer so likewise some biological terms because whatever pile form whatever our brain is performing this task is taken by central processing unit that's why it is called as brain of the computer charles babbage the year when he developed this system means 1837 he belongs to united kingdom 
Charles Babbage. He developed a system for performing calculations with some kind of memory. That's why he is considered as father of computer. If we take this evolution till Second World War, till Second World War, World Second World War means 1940s. Second World War started in 1939 and continued till 1945. So up to 1940s, these machines were not digital. After, during Second World War, first digital electronic calculating machine. Again, every term is important. Digital ones and zeros. Digits one or zero. Digits electronic equipment calculating machine which calculates arithmetic logical operations. But before that, before Second World War, There were some kind of machines. Computers were there, machines were there, but they are mechanical or analog. Analog computers, analog electronic calculating machines. When it comes to analog means, you will not have either ones or zeros continuously values will keep on changing. For example, if you take temperature, one example. Weather forecasting you want to do, temperature keeps on changing. 20 degrees, 25, 30, 35, again it will come down. 25, 20, if it is winter, minus degrees. This is how continuous movement of the numbers analog. It will be like this. It will go up, go down continuously. But when it comes to digital, you will have only two things, two states, one or zero. Because of this, it has transformed the computer itself in the later stages. That is how this digital, digitization, digitalization of the computers have transformed the computer, complete the power of the computers itself. Whatever this Central processing unit we have said, but electronically you need some kind of uh, equipments. And these equipments in the evolution of the computers, the evolution of the equipments also transformed. For example, up to World War, during First World War, electronic device started before Second World War, analog, mechanical. In 1950s, Transistors came. These are small electronic devices which has revolutionized the computer systems itself because in the small amount of space you can perform millions of operations. That is how transistors, first semiconductor transistors. When they started coming into the market with the invention of these transistors in 1940s and 50s, it has changed the nature of the computing boxes. In 1970s, it led to microcomputer revolution. 
earlier vacuum tubes were using now micro computers with the transistors completely revolution started in this micro means micro means very small computers earlier computers were very huge huge amount you can see computers entire room entire hall entire very big space were occupied by the computers but that amount of space now came down to very small space so that every human being can use the computers now you can see the computer size like desktop that way that's why we call micro computer now you can imagine desktop itself was called micro computer means the real big computers were how big it was the size of the computer was very very large before that and it was the time in 1970s it was the time bill gates microsoft and apple these companies emerged after this time only in india also tata consultancy service wipro these all entered into computer business gradually after this micro computer revolution in 1990s and 2000s early 2000s we see digital revolution or software revolution so here in 1970s bill gates steve jobs two examples intel micro computer revolution 90s and 2000s digital revolution software industry it was also the time india opened up liberalization lpg reforms also came india benefited out of this digital revolution today indian exports are one of the strongest exports of india are software industry 2000s now now onwards 2020s now just beginning of a new stage that we call artificial intelligence it is in talks for so many decades but in this decade we are just started seeing the results of artificial intelligence it will take some time in another decade 20 30s and 40s like digital revolution micro computer revolution we may see artificial intelligence revolution it may take some time maybe after 10 years 20 years completely it is going to transform but we are seeing already seeing the results of artificial intelligence this is how in the evolution of the computers we can see and we can see one more table this we call classification of computers based on the size based on the purpose they can be broadly classified if we take application based they can be analog computers digital computers hybrid computers computer now you know the definition of computer computer means any device which compute plus minus multiplication division and or operation for example temperature i have given one example the machine which calculates temperature you can take thermometer thermometer continuously it calculates temperature increase decrease analog when it comes to hybrid for example digital digital uses ones and zeros computers when it comes to hybrid suppose if you go to hospitals some kind of devices these devices use heartbeat
blood pressure so you will find hybrid nature because heart beat temperature of the patient blood pressure you need to track continuously whenever you need requirement of continuous tracking that becomes analog finally it will be converted into ones and zeros and it will show as different kind of output they become digital so hybrid nature analog digital application based suppose if you take size based so these are different type of classifications if we take size as the one of the important parameter to categorize they are called micro computers our desktop laptops all these are micro they are very small comparing with the previous generation that's why later mini computers don't confuse between micro and mini mini appears small but micro is even much smaller it is larger than this then main frame computers much bigger and if we increase the size super computer so it is based on the size but the ultimate architecture is it takes input it gives the output in between logical unit alu unit control unit and memory memory unit alu unit and control unit they are same but only the size will change and as the size increases the amount of calculations it will do increases that is why up to now a different kind of mechanism this central processing unit calculates operations up to certain level but now we are seeing artificial intelligence artificial intelligence requires tremendous amount of calculations same calculations arithmetic and logical calculations only even for alu also even for artificial intelligence also but you require huge amount of processing speed also you require processing equipments you require that is why we are changing now normal processor to gpu a, a next level of processing units we are transforming but the fundamental architecture is going to be the same but if you size the if you increase the size the number of operations it perform will increase enormously as a result the kind of work it does also changes next one suppose purpose if we take purpose based general purpose computers whatever we are doing general purpose computers for example we are using our laptops computers they can be utilized for normal operation general purpose we open various applications we open ms office excel windows then we browse also general generally but there are certain computers for special purpose for example india is launching so many missions into the space space so special purpose so those computers every operation is targeted towards that particular special purpose a nuclear research space research defense related that's why the entire power is utilized for the single goal special purpose computers so based on application analog digital hybrid based on size micro mini mainframe super computers purpose general purpose special purpose so these are the different types of computers this is how before 1950s they were utilized i will give one more table that will help you in understanding they are called generations of this also can be potential question 
first generation second generation third generation likewise so first generation this is from 1940 to 1956 forty to forties to fifties now you see during second world war time period they were using vacuum tubes they were using vacuum tubes vacuum tubes electronic devices which you use which are very large in nature comparing with the transistors that's why if you use vacuum tubes the space of the computer is going to be very large that is the first generation when it comes to second generation 1956 to 63 in epfo question can be first generation of the questions are manufactured with vacuum tubes second generation transistors semiconductor transistors silicon silicon became very important material for the development of transistors that's why in usa there is a place called silicon valley in india one city named after this because their computer software applications very become very powerful that city is bangalore bangalore is also named as silicon valley of india so the name silicon valley how it came means these transistors started using silicon semiconductors silicon became very core of the computers from now onwards transistors second generation now from now onwards the number of transistors from thousands to millions to billions trillions likewise it keep on increased third generation 1964 to 71 and they are called integrated circuits ICs integrated circuits fourth generation 1971 to present continuous fourth generation large scale integrated so integrated circuits this integrated circuits are developed from transistors the amount of transistors increased enormously this very large scale large scale integrated it even increased further now fifth generation present and beyond super large scale super large scale integrated circuits so integrated circuits this fifth generation this is required for artificial intelligence because it requires amount of operations are going to be enormous same basic arithmetic logical operations only earlier vacuum tubes first generation very huge amount of space was consumed by these computers later 1956 to 63 transistors came the size of the computers came down mainframe computers mini computers in third 1964 71 integrated circuits they have even reduced further decreased the size of the computers and this is one 1970s we have seen here 1970s micro computer revolution because invention of transistors and usage of transistors became very common it reduced the size of the computers enormously that is how every common person also could able to get the computers now so it is like today because of artificial intelligence now artificial intelligence at very high level 
it is like before 1970 it is like artificial intelligence technologies are used by mnc's or large scale corporations for business purpose common people are yet to see at large scale let us assume in future for example robots today robots are still they are in the making they are in the experimental stage you imagine every person on this earth gets one robot but today it is not possible it takes some time to get that before this 1970s also it was the condition computers were very huge very difficult to every person will not have computers but because of the invention of transistor and usage of transistors the size of the computer became normal as a result computer became very common to the common public likewise today robots are in the laboratories we don't know after 10 years or 20 years many people in the, like we are using the computers robots also may become common assistant so beside us like we are computers we are having robots might be there but again it requires uh, new inventions and uh, new electronic device innovations in 1970s these transistors made it possible as a result micro computers like micro robots micro computers became possible it has transformed the computer industry itself and 1971 onwards large scale and very large scale ic's and now onwards super large scale ic's are required to have multiple amount of operations this is how the introduction to computers we have seen the basics fundamentals what is the definition of the computer it is basic definition between data and information question can be asked organized that side unorganized this side organized unorganized unorganized comes to this unorganized data can be numeric alphabetic alphanumeric that becomes organized one when we give to the computer and these are various applications questions can be asked likewise now this is the basic architecture to show how input output process if we go a little bit deeper how this process is done by means this central processing unit one unit in the middle central processing unit within cpu memory unit arithmetic logic control unit output examples input examples output examples this is the architecture given by john von neumann 1970 because of this architecture now you see in 1970 many revolutionaries transistors became very common a new architecture came integrated circuits and transistors became very useful now as a result the size of the computer became normal it's very small micro computers uh, manufactured on top of it softwares also emerged in 1970s onwards only Microsoft, for example, in 1975, it was established. So likewise, we were going to see Microsoft, Apple, many such software applications, software development companies emerged after 1970s. By 1990, India also became one of the active participant in the software development. It is a machine which carry out sequence of arithmetic, logical. These are the two things. Arithmetic means this, logical means this. And Charles Babbage, beyond in 19th century itself he gave some kind of system he is considered as father of computer but from 1830s onwards little bit development was going on by 1970 almost after 150 years where we are going we have seen huge tremendous improvement in the computer industry this how evolution 70s 90s 2020s based on different type of nature we can categorize classify the computers analog digital hybrid before industrial before first second world war analog mechanical from second world war we are seeing the digital if we take size micro 1970s onwards revolution micro based mini mainframe supercomputers and supercomputers also now different uh, countries are having supercomputers in next class we are going to see that one if you take purpose as the classification general purpose 
for normal operations for special purpose designed for a specific purpose special purpose computers so this is how we need to have some kind of idea about how computers definition of computers and evolution of the computers in next class we will see some more deeper here itself you have many questions so keep revising it you will be able to get out of 8 to 9 questions at least 5 to 6 with a little bit understanding you will be able to make it that's why don't miss this opportunity all the best we will meet in the next class thank you hello students hi to everyone in this class we will see the continuation of computers class in the previous class we have seen the basic definition of computer this computer class will give you some more definitions and also some of the important aspects with respect to computers in previous class we have seen what do you mean by computer computer is an electronic device computer is an electronic device which performs arithmetic as well as logical operations the place where arithmetic and logical operations are performed we have seen that is part of control near control unit or overall both control as well as arithmetic logical unit along with the memory we consider it as central processing unit cpu cpu gets input from input section it provide output to the output section these things broadly we have seen and also we have seen various generations of computers charles babbage he is considered as the father of computer later many people many great people continued working on computers and today it is highly evolved ecosystem the computer industry is very highly evolved ecosystem in 1950s or up to 1950s a different kind of computers were there in the initial phase in the first generation vacuum tubes were utilized but these were occupying so much amount of space later with the invention of transistor the size of computers came down drastically by 1970s computers became very common to common people also that is why we call 1970s as the revolution of micro computers whatever we are seeing desktop these things were part of micro computers revolution and later vlsi ultra large scale integration integrated chips with the huge inventions huge breakthroughs the computing speed is increasing gradually today computers are ready even to handle artificial intelligence algorithms today we will see one more important section that is memory section when it comes to memory there are broadly two types of memory so this is computer memory broadly there are two types of memory if i write where we have seen this is control unit cu arithmetic logic unit this is one section and other section is memory unit combinedly it is called cpu central processing unit it gets input from input section it provide output to the output section so here this memory there are broadly two types of computer memory one is primary memory secondary memory
when it comes to primary memory this memory is very much essential for performing the operations for example arithmetic logic unit and control unit requires basic instructions how these instructions will come these instructions are there in the memory this memory contains different instructions computers cannot do on its own they have to be given instructions step 1 step 2 step 3 this we call algorithm it has to be given these steps instructions these instructions are stored in memory two types of memory primary secondary primary is immediately accessible to this particular section but this immediate primary memory cannot hold large amounts of data in order to store large amounts of data we need some other part of memory that is called secondary memory in primary memory two parts are there now from here onwards you will find important questions also mostly the abbreviations of this memory unit one first one is random access memory second one read only memory these are the two important primary memory units and when it comes to secondary memory generally hard disk hard disk is example of secondary memory it can be connected it can be removed still your computer will perform with basic instructions these fundamental instructions and basic instructions are there in random access memory and read only memory now when it comes to questions how questions can be asked means simply what is the abbreviation of ram random access memory what is the abbreviation in term in computers language what is the abbreviation of read only memory so rom or om means random read only memory we will see some more details about ram ram means random access memory random access memory you need to remember this because epfo questions are going to be simple simply they will ask if i write the question what is the abbreviation of r a m a b c d likewise random access memory they can give random access memory or real access memory they can give different different meanings rapid access memory repeat access memory so this is random access memory this is the first unit of this memory now when it comes to the permanency whether whatever instructions we are writing to this were there will it be there permanently means no some of the characteristics of random access memory is it is volatile in nature volatile in nature volatile in nature means once you switch off the power whatever unit whatever instructions that are there in the memory they will be erased as long as you keep the power on this unit this memory unit contains some kind of signals ones and zeros digits once you switch off it becomes vanished this is called volatile in nature but the moment you switch on 
computer control unit arithmetic logic unit they bring certain amount of instructions to random access memory and they perform from random access memory because random access memory is very close to the unit it performs very fastly next one we can read also we can write in random access memory we can read also read from the random access memory we can write also but don't confuse with uh, it is not same as hard disk in hard disk once you store it it will be there but here even though after writing if you switch off the power that instructions will go vanish for storing permanently you have to store in the hard disk secondary memory that's why this is temporary in nature but with respect to speed this is very fast comparing with the secondary storage this is part of primary storage now when it comes to rim these are the specific characteristics when it comes to rom this is read only memory the name is indicating read only memory now we can see when it comes to rim this is random access memory both you can write also you can read also but when it comes to rom read only memory only you can read that means once you write on the read only memory unit those instructions will stay permanently you cannot write when you are operating the computer if you want to write again you have to manufacture separately with a separate mechanism that is why what kind of instructions are given means the moment when you start the computer computer in the beginning stage requires certain instructions to set up the basic instructions this is non volatile non volatile read only memory and in the manufacturing time period itself while you are manufacturing while manufacturing the motherboard integrated circuit or computer it requires a certain fundamental instructions when you switch on the computer it has to do something otherwise we cannot computer cannot operate those initial things while manufacturing itself we give those <coughs> instructions those are written in random read only memory rom this is with respect to read only memory only read suppose some basic programs will be there when you start the computer you require certain programs to be run immediately when you switch on based on that different type programmable read only memory e prom erasable programmable read only memory second one electrically erasable programmable read only memory this read only memory programmable read only memory means once you write the program you cannot do anything there is some kind of mechanism with magnetic field also you can rewrite with electrical signals also you can rewrite if it is electrical electrically erasable programmable read only memory you can erase it erasable program read only memory you can erase it and you can rewrite but once you write instructions you cannot change that is how read only memory so these are different types of primary memories for example how questions can be asked on this storage means where are programs and data are to be used by the computer available processing unit input output storage so here they are asking programs and data to be used by 
the computer are available in which part of this architecture is it available in input is it available in output is it available in processing unit or memory that is storage memory part of also called storage what is the definition of RAM abbreviation random access memory what is the definition of re ROM read only memory so likewise primary and secondary memory when it comes to hard disk that is part of secondary memory we can write it and we can save we can keep it safe for very long time when it comes to read only memory the size of read only memory is very short that's why we cannot keep much amount of data there we have to keep large amounts of data in hard disk that is part of secondary memory these two are very fast this is slow comparing with uh, random access memory and read only memory if your computer is having less amount of ram your speed is low if you increase the ram size your computer size will increase your computer speed will increase because this is the unit which is immediately available to the control unit this is about memory next chapter is about data representation data representation now we are saying we will give something to the input and it is processing something and after processing we will get the output also this input goes it performs certain operations and it give to the output for example in the keyboard if we type the digit 1 2 3 4 and so on computer cannot understand 3 4 5 6 and so on it will convert those digits into different form in either 0 or 1 0 or 1 means simply in computers architecture it is like a electric bulb if you switch off if you switch off the bulb that is zero state if you switch on that becomes one so it is electrical state of electric bulb zero in terms of zero and one this is the number which we are understanding but for computer electronic computer zero means power off one means power on so these computers are containing lot of transistors millions and millions of transistors are used in manufacturing the computer every transistor works like electric bulb if you switch on transistor that represents one if you switch off it represents zero so that electrical state is considered as zero and one everything has to be converted into electric signal zero or one so only two possible options that is zero or one either switch off or switch on only two possible options in terms of probability possibilities that's why these are called binary binary 2 now when it comes to data representation binary data 0 or 1 but for human beings we cannot easily understand zeros and ones for example if we want to go to the market to the supermarket and by saying our bill is 100 rupees or 129 rupees 129 rupees in terms of computer everything becomes 0 1 1 0 1 0 like that you have to sell if you say to the vendor that what is the amount if vendor says 1 0 0 0 like that you will not understand 
and if you take if you say to the vendor that your amount is this much no one will understand we will say that 1 to 9 rupees these digits are important for human transactions these digits are there like 0 1 2 and so on up to 9 total 0 1 2 3 and so on 9 these are 10 different 10 different numbers these numbers we also call 10 different digits so 10 digits when it comes to 10 digits this system is called decimal system when it is only two binary data this is binary system there are two more representations of data that is hexagonal octal system octal system means eight different possibilities next one hexa decimal system 16 different possibilities so 10 possibilities two possibilities eight possibilities and 16 possible different ways of representing data these are called different types of number systems so now you can give the heading number systems types of number systems in each different type of number system different way of representation is given so first one is binary number system second one is decimal number system octal decimal system hexa decimal number system now i am going to give you these details binary now i'll keep writing this you will have either 0 or 1 when it comes to octal system this is 2 octal means 8 8 means 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 will not be there in this already 0 to 7 eight digits are covered if you want to write eight not available in this system if you want to write eight either you go for decimal or hexadecimal system decimal system contains 10 digits 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 8 9 if we want to write the next number we are going to use the same numbers in a different way if you want to use the next number you have to reuse this in a different way same thing you have to reuse in a different way hexadecimal this is 16 Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten is not there. A, B, C, D, E. 
A represents 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So that total, how many total numbers? 16. 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 9, 10. A, B, C, D, E, F. 6. 10 plus 6, 16. Then if you want to write the next number, then you have to use the combination of these existing different possibilities. We will see how it is possible when it comes to writing. Here, few technical words will come when it comes to the digits. Here we are calling two digits, eight digits, ten digits, sixteen digits. So two digits, eight, ten digits likewise. Now we have this string of digits. Suppose 0 is a digit, 1 is a digit. If you write like this continuously, one after the other digits, it becomes a string. So this string can be 4 digit string, 8 digit string, 1 digit string. If we take about binary system, we have only 0 and 1. Everything you have to mention in terms of this 0 or 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, anything. Only it should be continuously 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 1. Here in computer language, there are few terms with respect to this. This is also called single digit, it is called bit. This is called bit, single bit. Like four digit string, eight digit string, we can also represent one digit is one bit. Four bit string. So you can also call four bit string eight bit string. There are some other terms also for this. This a string of four digits or four bit string is called nibble. In examination, nibble contains how many digits? Four digits. Or it can be asked, a nibble contains how many bits? Four bits. This eight bits we call a, a byte. Four kilobytes, six kilobytes, seven kilobytes, like that we used to say, that is byte. A byte is the representation of how many bits? Eight bits. A byte is the representation of how many digits? Eight digits. So these are the very technical words, potential MCQs also. What do you mean by nibble? What do you mean by byte? Bit, digit. So these are the technical terms you need to understand. Here you are getting different terminologies like what is a digit, string of digits, bits, string of bits, nibble, byte. All are potential MCQ questions. Now, if I write in a single way, suppose if I write a bit, that means it is a string of one digit, only one digit. We cannot do anything. It can be either zero or it can be either one. In terms of binary system, binary number system, computers understand zeros and ones, transistors on or off. 
bit is a zero or one two possibility a string of one digit enable this is a string of four digits a string of four digits you can write any representation one one zero zero anything it can be one zero one zero you will see only either one zero one zero nothing you will you now you will see only two possibilities in a different combinations byte byte is a string of eight digits this eight you can represent it has to be continuously eight bits or eight digits you can write anything but it should be either only one or zero anything another example like this it can be all zeros also it can be all ones also combination of ones and zeros also here this table will represent that bit means single four bits nibble eight bits byte now you can see any number transistors one transistor four transistors eight transistors that is why in computers it is all about electric bulbs eight bulbs four bulbs single bulb that is why our 8 9 7 6 they cannot understand only whether electrical signal is on or off now in day to day system we cannot understand this we have to use the decimal system now we need some kind of idea about when we give the input 9 as the input through keyboard if we give 9 when epfo when dispersal is 2 lakhs 5 lakh 9 lakh rupees provident fund is there means everything you cannot represent ones and zeros nobody will understand in common day to day life we type like 9 lakhs but that 9 lakh has to be converted into this form then only computer will understand 9 lakh what does it mean it will calculate if there is any interest accumulation it will calculate interest on 9 lakh if there is any deductions it will do perform everything has to be converted into ones and zeros this system that has to be understood how digital 10 digits or decimal system is converted into binary system binary system is converted into decimal system now i will give once again this form so that you will have better idea when it comes to binary everything becomes 1 0 So if I start zero one, if it is octal system, everything whatever represents zero one two three four five six seven eight will not be there. Only eight digit, but up to zero to seven. Then decimal system. Available numbers are zero one two three four five six seven eight. Nine, nine only. When it comes to hexa decimal, when it comes to hexa decimal, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, up to nine. Ten digits came. Six more. A, B, C, D, E, F. available digits individual digits are in hexadecimal this decimal system is this octal system is this binary system is this one now this shows in binary number system what is the base for us base these two numbers base is two numbers when it comes to octal the our basic foundation of the numbers base is eight digits here our fundamental basis is 10 digits our basis is 16 digits so this is the fundamental base on 
Based on this, we will calculate any number beyond this. Next one. That's why, suppose if there is 1, 2, 3, 4. Or let me consider 1, 0. If I say 2, this means base 2. Ones and zeros are available here also. Zero and one. In binary system also, it is available. Octal system also available. Decimal system also available. Hexadecimal system also available. Zero and one. But if you take two, two is available only in octal, decimal, hexadecimal, but not in the binary system. If you represent three, if you represent eight, eight is available in decimal or hexadecimal. So that's why, suppose if I write one zero, in binary system, this is base two. Same I can give in decimal system also base 10. Same I can represent in octal system also, hexadecimal system also. Because one and zero are always available in all the formats, but one and zero what really means? Is it 10 or something else, something else, unless we say the base here. This is base 10. I represent like this. Base 8. Base 16. Likewise, I can 10, 10, 10, 10. Number is same. But if I represent 2, 10, 8, 16, its value will change according to the number system. Now, equivalents. Now, let us see how we can translate from one system to the other system. For example, if I take decimal system, let me stay like equivalents. Decimal system. Decimal system, available digits are 10 digits. Decimal, 10. In binary, 2. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Like this. Now, let me write a little bit lower. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Or let me say better if I write bigger one. Zero, one, two, three, four. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now what I am really representing here? Here I am simply representing if I want the next number 9, how I represent? 10. But in fact if you observe this just purely in terms of two digits you are identifying 1 and 0. 1 is a separate digit, 0 is a separate digit. 0 is a separate digit, 1 is a separate digit. In the first, in the first circumstance, you are writing 0, 1. I can give like this also. So in the first, while you are writing for the first time, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, like this. Now the moment after 9, there is no other digit. But we have to reuse the same digit. Now what I am doing, in this place, I am putting 1. This is how you need to observe. This 0 becoming 1. Now 1. 
वंस अगेन जीरो वन टू थ्री वन वन टू वन थ्री वन फोर वन फाइव वन सिक्स वन सेवन वन एट वन नाइन इफ यू ऑब्जर्व दिस दीज आर द सेम डिजिट्स दीज आर द सेम डिजिट्स बट बियॉन्ड नाइन द लेफ्ट साइड वन दिस जीरो इन द फर्स्ट इंसिडेंट जीरो दिस बिकेम दिस Now in the second incident, it became here. Now third time, if I want to go beyond one nine, then this becomes two. Next, same thing will repeat: two zero, two one, two three four five six seven eight nine. Here two 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 two. So this is represented. Likewise, three will come, four will come, five will come, six, seven, eight, nine. That's why if you keep writing like this, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 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 nine. Only zero to nine. You cannot do anything. Only this option is available only to use. or reuse it now after 9 9 what is happening now in the second space also in the first space all we used in the second place also we tried with all the numbers now after 9 there is nothing again we have to come back to zero now if i want to represent the third one now you think like in the third place we have triple zeros This means zero, 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 zero. Here also, the third digit is we are assuming zero, zero. Nothing is there. Zero, zero. In the second place, all the nine options are done. Now, this zero becomes one because we tried with this. Now, third digit becomes one. That's how. Once again, now this becomes one. they all become zero zero one zero zero now you place in all these places one so third digit becomes one now one zero zero one zero one one zero two one zero three one zero four likewise again repetition so one digit goes to the left side it will keep on increase that's why 100 after 199 Now what is the option left? There is no digit beyond nine. You just you have to reuse. After one, you have to reuse zero. After one, two only comes. Next three, four, five, like that. So this is how in decimal system we understand this number. Now let us apply to the same logic. Every decimal system or every number system works in the same way. now i am going for this is decimal system now if i go for octal system the base is eight digits only 0 to 7 so in the first circumstance we get when i am writing for the first time 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 there is no 8 now to go beyond 7 i have to reuse the same numbers now it is 0 i am assuming second place is occupied with 0 0 now what i have to imagine now you remember this after 0 9 after the ninth digit that is the last digit now this 0 became 1 this came back to the 0th position this became one now if we apply this after this now there are two places this after 7 it becomes back to the zero zero becomes next one so one zero be careful one zero now zero one two three seven are same one two three four five six seven 
one, 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 one. Again, there is no eight. Now what will happen? It has to be, now one becomes two. Zero in the first circumstance, second is done, so zero game, one came. Now in the second, now it becomes zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. After one, we will go for two, 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 two. Now you get the confusion that here also 17, here also 25, 26 are there. Here also 25, 26, 27 are there. But now to represent, if I say 27 in 8, it is different. 27 in base 10 is a different value. We have to see that way. How we will convert octal, octal system to decimal system, we will see later. For now, you need to just have an idea that here only eight possibilities are there, zero to seven. If you want to go to the number beyond that possibility, just you have to repeat the zero to seven combinations in a multiple way. So in the first circumstance, first incident, zero occupied second place. Now, if you go beyond zero seven, now one occupies, two occupies, likewise, in this case, nine occupied. In this case, seven, one, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, one, seven, two, like this. Because there is no eight. Now, if you want to go beyond seven, seven, what should be the condition? Now, here beyond seven, if you want to go, you just placed, again, you came back to the zero position. Now, again, you will come back to the zero zeros but here in the third line we are assuming this is only zero 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 that is how this zero becomes one zero zero again come back to the position so as of now all zeros third one also zero now if you want to go beyond triple seven you just replace this zero with one so one zero zero one zero one one zero two one zero three one zero four like that so one zero this is base 8. This is base 10. Both are different. And here only 1 and 0, you may get confusion 1, 0, 0, base 2 also. Decimal system also, binary system also, octal system also, in hexadecimal system also possibility is there. But to represent that, you need to give 16. So this is our number system. This is very, very crucial when it comes to the moving from one number to the other number. Here, one number is different, having different meaning, and in other number system, it has different meaning. Now, come back to the binary system. How? This is how, finally, after understanding this, now it becomes easy to understand binary system. Ultimately, in computer's language, binary system is the most crucial part. Here, possibilities are 0, 1. When it comes to octal system, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, we tried. When it comes to decimal, 0 to 9, we tried. But binary, only 0 and 1. Now, beyond that, what to do? All possibilities are done. Now, this 1 becomes 0. This 0 becomes 1. Now, 1, 1. Same repetition. Suppose if I say zero, one. In the second incident, what happens? This zero becomes one. This one becomes like possibilities zero, one. In the third circumstance, now here one, one. In this also possibilities are done. Now there is no two. Now we have to go for third space. Now we have to go for third space. Now this becomes one. Zero, zero, beginning. Zero, zero, 
zero one. Now one one zero one one one. Now we can see this is how repetition will happen. Now if you want to go beyond this, now what should be the case? In the fourth condition it is zero zero. So zero. Now this zero becomes one. Fourth place becomes one. All these big becomes zero zero zero. Again repetition. Here zero zero one. Now one zero one zero. Zero one is done. Now this place one zero one one. Zero one, this place one came zero one. Now in this place one will come zero zero. This becomes one again zero 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 one. Likewise, it will keep going. Just after this. Only repetition, one after the other, one number. Once repetition is done, you keep the left side number. Once again, one zero. Likewise, you write any number. It is going to be only ones and zeros. This is how, when it comes to suppose thousand. In decimal system, it appears thousand. But if I give base two, the value is going to be different one. If I give base number eight, going to be different. Base sixteen, going to be different. Now let us try hexadecimal. When it comes to hexadecimal, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten is not there. A, B. C D E F. Now, if you want to go beyond it, you want to go beyond it. Now, this zero becomes one. Again, repetition: one zero, one one, one two, one three, one four, one five, one six. One seven, one eight, one nine. Next, one A, one B, one C, one D, one E, one F. Getting second place replaced zero by one. Then this becomes like this. Now after that, one becomes two. This came, this came. Now you have to try with everything. Two also now two zero two one two two like that. Two zero one two three and so on. Two F. Likewise three F. Four F. Likewise F F. So this way, just we how to utilize the existing numbers for repetition purpose. Now this is what. More crucial part: how we are going to convert it. For example, this is decimal system. In this decimal system, the first number is zero. When it comes to binary, here also we say zero. Octal also. Zero. Hexa decimal also zero because zero is available in all the systems. Zero. One. In decimal also same. Here also one. 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 No issue. Now from the third issue only it starts with third one. Here zero one two is available. In octal also two is available, 
hex also 2 is available but binary 2 is not available what is the equivalent of that 0 0 1 this 0 becomes 1 now once again repeat 1 0 3 1 1 here 3 is available 3 is available now how you can convert this binary system to decimal system now this is what important UPSC uh, used to ask EPFO questions can be asked if 1 1 is binary what is the equivalent of decimal system in this table we can easily understand here 1 1 means here 3 but how you calculate to calculate any decimal system 1 1 1 1 into 2 if you want to convert something into decimal system how you will calculate this is how questions can be asked so for that we have to understand this entire decimal system that's why I have explained you very clearly that here different equivalents in decimal system how this is going to be repeated in octal system how it is going to be repeated binary system how it is going to be repeated question will come like 1 1 this is suppose if 11 in decimal system that is 11 the meaning of 11 in decimal system is different the meaning of 1 1 in binary system is different now what is the equivalent of this we have to multiply to the equivalence of rising powers here this is 1 1 two positions are there this is 0th position this is first position because 0 is considered as the first number that's why in position also let us say 0th first second but two positions are there here 2 is there now you multiply this you take 1 into 2 power 1 position this 1 plus 1 into 0th position 2 power 0 so this position becomes here this becomes here now 2 power 0 is 1 anything power 0 is 1 2 power 1 1 1 into 2 that means 2 plus 1 that is equal to 3 so 1 1 in binary digit is 3 in decimal system suppose if you want to convert 3 into binary system this can be asked this way also question can be 3 in decimal system equivalent of in binary system what is that how you will do here we are doing multiplication you can remember multiplication here to the rise power of 2 but here division so when you want to calculate in terms of 2 you have to divide 3 by 2 if you divide 2 1 are 2 remainder is 1 now you will write from 1 1 likewise so now you see how you are getting suppose it is 4 what is the binary digit how you will know this is 2 this is 4 2 2 are remainder is 0 2 1 the remainder is 0 start from here 1 0 0 is so 1 0 0 when it comes to 4 
here all possibilities are done 0 1 0 1 here is once again 0 1 only but this one becomes 0 0 this 1 1 0, 0, 0. Now you see, third position is 0. When it comes to 4, all options are done, all possibilities are done. Now this became 0, 1, 0, 1, same, 0, 1. This becomes 0, 0, but third position becomes 1, 1. So this is how, in base 2, this is equivalent to 4. So how you can convert 1, 0, 0, In decimal system, what is in binary system 100? Zero, zero. In decimal system, what does it mean? Means what is the position? 0, 0, 1. Zero at the position, first position, second position. Now 0 into 2 power 0 plus plus 0 into 2 power 1. This is 0 into 2 power 1 plus 1 into 2 power 2. So anything, 0 into anything, 0 into 1, 0 into 2, 1 into 4. So this is 0, this is 0, this is 4, total 4. So this is 4. All right. So this is how we need to understand how binary system is converted into decimal system. You got to know this decimal system binary. So same is the case with the octal hexadecimal also, but for now we are saying decimal and binary. So in next class, we will continue remaining portions. So here, we are going to stop this class. Thank you. Hello, students. Hi to everyone. We are doing computers class as part of EPFO. Today is the third class. In today's class, we will deal with two parts, computer hardware and computer software. Earlier, we have seen what is the computer, the definition of the computer, the architecture of the computer, memory, different types of memory of the computer, and data representation, how data is represented in computers. It is in binary format, ones and zeros. But we human beings cannot understand, we cannot understand ones and zeros always. We have decimal system, but there should be a mechanism to convert decimal system into binary system also. Those things we have seen. Today, we will see computer hardware and computer software. Always, whenever computer comes, we should always have this in mind. Always have this in mind. This is the central processing unit. Here we have control unit. I am simply writing CU, control unit, arithmetic and logic unit. This will keep interacting with memory unit. And entire this part is cased in plastic or metal box. This we call CPU, central processing unit.
This requires data. What computer? If we give raw input, it will give refined output, information. The raw input we call data, the refined output we call the information. This data we give through some kind of mechanism. That mechanism we call in this computer architecture as input. And there should be some mechanism to get the output that we call output section in the computer architecture. This is entire computer architecture. This input and output and central processing unit have certain things which we can touch and see it directly. And at the same time, there are certain things which we cannot see and touch. So there are some components which we can see and touch it. We can directly outward appearance is visible, some components of the computer. There are some components of the computer, we cannot touch them, but we can write, we can see, but we cannot touch them. And this is where two different sections in these components will come. One is computer hardware and computer software. Suppose if I take simple definition of computer hardware. When it comes to EPFO exam, with respect to computers, simply they will ask, which of the following is a input device? Which of the following is output device? Like that. Now, input device and output device will come under part of computer hardware. Let us see this. For example, I am writing the definition of computer hardware. So what is the definition of it? What is computer hardware means? Physical components of a computer. Physical components of a computer. That can be seen that can be seen untouched by the user. User means whoever using the computer. You can be an user, I can be user, some other person can be user. Every user can see it and touch it. That physical component of the computer we call computer hardware. Now it is all about electronic device, and there are certain wires also, electrical wires. There are certain mechanical boxes also. Likewise, this can be all of them. Different types of computer hardware means it can be electronic. We have seen in the first class the evolution of the computers. In the initial days, vacuum tubes were there. Later, integrated chips, transistors. After the invention of the transistors, transistors became fundamental part of computer architecture. Later, integrated chips, very large scale integrated chips, and so on. Those are electronic components. Electrical components. Computer requires power. And this power connection goes through wires. These are electrical components. Mechanical components. Mechanical components, which we have boxes and all, those are mechanical components. Everything is part of computer hardware. Once again, based on the nature in the computer architecture, we have input this side, output this side. Based on input and output, this hardware can be defined into input hardware and output devices. Simply input devices and output devices. How questions can be asked with respect to computer hardware means questions are going to be simple. This definition itself is a question. The physical components of a computer that can be seen and touched by in the computer architecture is dash. Simple. This 
that is computer hardware. Likewise, questions will come. This computer device, one type electrical, electronic, and mechanical. There is another way of looking at, that is input devices. Another way of looking at the different types of computer hardware is input devices. What the input device means, computer central processing unit, it takes the data from the input devices and give it to the, after processing it, after converting data into information, it pass that information to the output device. And this output device have different type of devices. When it comes to input devices, data is entered into main memory. Data is entered into the central processing unit, memory unit. Through these input devices. In another way, data is feed. So feeding data, data is fed. Data feeding, data is fed through these input devices. The most common input device in every our desktop or laptop is keyboard and mouse. These are the two very, very fundamental, very crucial inputs. Through this, through hard, the mouse and the keypad, we give the input to the computer central processing unit. Central processing unit march, take the input and process it, convert it to information, pass on to the output. Examples. Keyboard, mouse. This mouse, when you move the mouse, it is having a pointer. When you click on that, it is a kind of input to the computer. What should be done by the computer? If you enter some words in keyboard, it's a kind of input. What should be done by the computer? And there are so many such examples. These are few examples like keyboard and mouse. Some other examples, if I write, for example, when you go to supermarket, when you go to supermarket, in the billing section, they use the barcode reader. It reads the barcode. Barcode will contain like this. It has the information about the product, product price, item number, everything. This is a kind of input along with the keyboard. They just need to read through barcode reader. Another one. <clears throat> there are certain images through optical carrot. Suppose text is a kind of image. If you want to convert the text directly into letters in the computer, optical character recognition, OCR, optical character recognition. In UPS, in EPFO, simply they will ask what is the full form of OCR, optical character recognition. Next one, smart card reader. For example, credit card, debit card, it's a kind of reading mechanism, input. Computer need not to be always desktop, whatever we are seeing. That is the basic architecture that you can use in multiple ways. ATM is a computer. Where you will show smart card reader, through this our bank details are read by the computer. Barcode reader in supermarket, a different kind of com computer system that looks different from what we regularly use, laptop or desktop. Architecture of computer is going to be similar, input, output, in between, central processing unit. 
but the look is going to be different next one biometric sensor aadhar card reader is a kind of biometric sensor eye scanner so eye reader palm the thumb impression reader next is scanner if you have book we can scan it and it will convert into pdf it's a kind of input device now you can see keyboard and mouse are very commonly utilized used by almost everyone these are specific things these are also part of input devices this is a part of computer hardware all these can be we can see and we can touch it if we go for sound mechanism microphone mic speaker is a kind of speaker comes in the output mic when we speak audio when it comes to video webcam camera so camera is a kind of input device mic is a kind of input device now we can see different type of different ways of text also we can give the input audio also we can give the input video also we can give the output similarly when it comes to the output in all these format in text format also in image format also in audio format in video format we can get the output also those were part of output devices those are part of output device what output device do central processing unit data comes once data comes it process it give information so data is taken it processed and give the information to the output this is how this output is information processed whatever we are asking the computer computer respond to that input and gives output receives data from the cpu and show it in the output devices it can be text also it can be image also it can be audio also it can be video also so likewise it can have different mechanisms how it can be used text also image also audio also video also now if we see some output devices these are all part of computer hardware input devices we have seen output devices why we are discussing this in examination simply they will ask which of the following are input devices they will give like different uh, few output devices and one input device question will be which of the following is a input device or they will give three input devices one output device question can be which of the following are output devices first one monitor this is the best because we all interact with computer through monitor we give input to keyboard and we see keep on seeing with monitor next one speaker that's the kind next one printer if you want to take print out printer is output device which comes in the form of printing next one headphones whatever we listen speaker also kind of output headphone also kind of if we go to big monitor projector it can be projected on the wall also so monitor projector speaker and headphone printer are <coughs> different type of <coughs> are different type of output devices and these output devices show the 
information which was processed by the computer. Now I will give you the question. You can have some idea how questions will come. Keyboard is a dash. Input device, output device, memory size, storage, likewise. Input device. Next question. Monitor is a dash output device. Are you getting how questions will be asked? Very fundamental. Questions in computer are going to be very, very fundamental level. Just if you have broad idea also, you'll be able to recognize it. So this is about computer hardware. Two chapters we will discuss. One is computer hardware. Broadly what we have seen, which is computer hardware is a component of the computer which we can see and touch it. Two types broadly, input hardware devices, output hardware devices. Keyboard, mouse, barcode. So it can be images also, text also, audio also, video also. It can be read by the input devices, processed by the central processing unit, given to the output devices. Monitor, printer, speaker. So these are various output devices. Next chapter is computer software. We have seen hardware. If we simply plug it, it will not work. There should be some kind of mechanism what should be done with these input devices. How communication should happen between input devices, central processing unit, and output devices. There should be kind of communication channels, communication mechanism. There should be a way so that the data whatever we have given in the form of input is converted, processed, and converted into the information which we human beings require. The definition is this, this communication mechanism is in the form of instructions. These instru set of instructions are called computer software. Definition is collection of computer programs. Program is nothing but set of instructions. So these set of instructions like step one, you do this. Step two, you do this. Step three, we do, you do this. This is also called algorithm in software language. These algorithms are set of instructions. Combinedly, they are called program. Set of programs combinedly we call software. And this software, it instructs the computer. What is the main purpose of this? It instructs the computer or central processing unit what to do. And it is also an interface between user and the computer hardware. Computer hardware is a physical component, but how we communicate? We users and computer hardware There should be an interface, communication between these two that is called software. So it is an interface between user and the computer hardware. These are simple definition. So the purpose is to instruct the computer what to do. There are some other functions also like it will control the computer hardware. It control the central processing unit processing mechanism. 
and it integrate input with the output it manage the computer hardware so controlling it integrating it managing it all these were part of computer software this we can see it we will write it but we cannot touch them that is one difference between computer software and hardware next like we have types of computer hardware input devices one hardware output devices one type of hardware similarly here computer software also two types are there one is system software another one application software system software and application software you can see this application means a specific application whereas system it handles the hardware how input devices central processing unit and output devices everything should be controlled managed integrated so computer architecture input devices output devices central processing unit all are required a kind of mechanism so that they all operate in with integrity otherwise instructions whatever we give input if we give something in the keyboard central processing unit may not in infer it what has to do exactly and it may not give have any communication with output devices and we won't see anything in the monitor this is what we call system software simply to control to manage to integrate integrate computer hardware components computer hardware components so it is a computer architecture input output central processing unit they are all with the physical components computer hardware among these computer hardware there should be an integrating mechanism that is done by computer system software example best example is operating system operating system is the in 1970s this software micro computers became famous after during 1970s 1990s this software industry boomed particularly this application software and in 1970s with the micro computers this software system softwares became very popular windows apple ios windows linux unix are some of the examples of operating systems so operating system is operating os operating system it operates it integrates all the computer hardware input central processing unit and output windows unix linux apple ios are examples of operating systems now this is one type of example there is second type that is device drivers the basic instructions by the computer done by operating system even after operating system is loaded if you have separate specific input barcode reader if you connect some new hardware to the computer that new hardware may not have the basic instructions in the operating system how to operate because you can extend with many number of input devices basic like mouse keyboard required software may come in the operating system but if you add something new scanner 
it requires certain device drivers so that this software make the device functional when it is connected it is a new input operating system cannot have all the instructions for all types of input devices whenever a new input device is invented or developed by a hardware industry it has to have some kind of mechanism to integrate with the system that is called device drivers there is one more that is language translator language translator is another system software so we are dealing with system software one is operating system second one device drivers third one is language translator language translator means computer has a different kind of language ones and zeros yesterday we have seen in data in data representation but when we are writing the name of in provident fund beneficiary if you write the name of the beneficiary computer should translate it into ones and zeros every every character every digit has to be converted into ones and zeros and these are called language translators some examples of language translators are three types basic types are there assembler compiler third one interpreter assembler compiler interpreter depending on the software computer languages these languages for example there are so many languages like c c++ java python like that so many languages are there when they interact with the system and there should be a kind of mechanism in between machine what machine understands and what we users understand user understanding language is different system understanding language is different in between these different types of language translators assembler compiler interpreter are the these are also system softwares these are also set of instructions how it should be translated from user language to the computer language next one application software application software this help user this is a particular software it help user to perform single task or some multiple tasks for example operating system windows when we have windows operating system it may also come with basic other some application softwares best example is microsoft word microsoft excel spreadsheet powerpoint likewise so many applications in our operating system we find and we can add new software also that is application based on a different type of application website is a kind of application word excel powerpoint so different type of database are there database applications so based on this we can have general software application software two are there these are general commonly used by anyone for any purpose second one specific general software or specific software when it comes to general ms office once you become employee of provident fund officer then you are going to use ms office regularly word excel sheet 
as of now also you might be using for study purpose also vlc player examples database like mysql there are different type of databases like this when it comes to specific it can be accounting software the only purpose is accounting mechanism payroll mechanism it can be a, a website for reservation purpose when you open indian railways irctc you will open and you can input the you can give the inputs that purpose of that specific software is to provide reservation in the railways likewise specific software also a kind of mechanism in application software general purpose application software so general purpose specific purpose so we have seen system software that system software is fundamental for integrating all input output central processing unit application software is for specific goal where users can benefit out of this computing computers there is one more this is broad classification about software and there are some few other concepts one is when you create a software you develop the software either you can have copyright on your on your name or you can open it so that everyone can use freely and everyone can develop also it need not to be developed by single person it can be developed by community and it is open to all based on this kind of nature two types will come open source software where source code is available to public the basic source code source code means the basic code which is used for the development of this entire software is available in the public domain open source software if it is having copyright proprietary so once you write the software either you can have copyright in your own name or you can open it to the public this is owned by so based on ownership owned by individual or a company it can be owned by a an individual or a group of individuals or a company open source software is source code is open for all so there are so many proprietary softwares which will come with a payment of payment only only if you pay that software can be downloaded and utilized if it is open source it is open for all for example linux my sql so these are two few examples where this is an operating system operating system is one kind of software operating system is system software mysql database software general purpose software it's a kind of software it's a kind of software but the source code is available in the public domain if someone wants to develop further also they can and it can be utilized freely by the users so these are different type of examples now if you see the questions how questions can be asked again questions are going to be relatively easy simply they will ask like this for example here i will give you the question just based on these two open source software and proprietary software question can be asked like this this software is copyrighted and bears the limits against use this software is copyrighted a b c d so one is system software second one application software open source software proprietary software so open source 
proprietary so open source and proprietary whenever you see the copyrighted that is about proprietary software this kind of mechanism next one examples of another question can be another question can be which of the following example of open source open source a linux b my sql c unix d all of the above linux my sql unix all are open source software open by open to everyone everyone can see the source code they can also develop if they feel some development is required likewise questions can be asked now i will read one more question you can have some idea which one of the following is defined as a set of instructions data or programs used to operate computers and execute specific tasks which one of the following is defined as a set of instructions set of instructions processor hardware software set of instructions means software the term used to describe the intangible instruction intangible we cannot really see fully we cannot touch them intangible instruction that tell the computer what to do is hardware software software so likewise the primary purpose of software is to turn data into information the data what we give in the form of input turns into information with these softwares so this is how questions can be asked in this class we have seen two chapters one is computer hardware it is a physical component which we can see and touch it two types input devices output devices questions can be asked which of the following is a input device which of the following output device second chapter is computer software computer software is set of instructions which we need to integrate all these hardwares and it acts as an interface between user and the computer application software here if we see the basic types of software system software application software when it comes to system software operating system is one example device drivers one example language translators language translator examples assembler compiler interpreter when it comes to application software they help to perform a single or some set of in goals word excel powerpoint are some of the examples of general purpose specific purpose a website can be developed specifically for a particular task an accounting software likewise a reservation system when it comes to general purpose office vlc player database these general purpose softwares can be used for any of these specific tasks likewise softwares and hardware in this class we stop here in next class we will continue with another chapter in computers